All right, let's look at a few examples using substitution to find antiderivatives. Right. Um, now, this first one is pretty similar to the example we led off with. We had e to the x squared. Now you have a sine of x squared. You might worry about the plus 5, but we know that taking the derivative of a constant gives you 0, right? So again, uh, strategy for any substitution problem is you're always on the lookout for is there function composition, right? Remember that substitution is the reverse of chain rule. Chain rule applies to composition. Here, we see that we have something inside the sine function. So that's your obvious candidate for your u, right? So once you've kind of made a guess at what u should be, you come down, you say, okay, so I'm going to take u as x squared plus 5. Then we find du. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of 5 is 0. So we have 2x dx, right? And then we come back and we say, okay, do I have 2x dx? And no, we don't. We have x dx, but not 2x dx. So we say, okay, x dx is here, x dx. So what do we have to do? We got to get rid of the 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Again, if you like to, you could put a 2 here, put a 1 half out front, but we'll do it this way. This is typically how people like to operate. Um, okay, so then we say, okay, so this x times dx, that gets grouped together. That's going to be 1 half du. This is just going to be sine of u. So we have integral sine of u times 1 half du. And we know what the antiderivative of sine is, right? So this is now negative cosine of u times a half. Might as well put the 1 half out front, possibly plus a constant. And as usual, we don't leave it in terms of u. We want to keep it in terms of x. So we go back and we say, what was u again? Oh, yeah, u was x squared plus 5, right? And when in doubt, all right, substitution is new. Takes a little while to get the hang of substitution for a lot of people. But remember, it's the reverse of chain rule. By now, you're chain rule experts. How do you know you got the right answer? Well, if this is an antiderivative, taking the derivative should get me back to where I started. So if I take the derivative of minus 1 half cosine of x squared plus 5, what do I get? Well, constant stays there. Derivative of cosine gives me negative sine. That negative cancels that negative. I get sine of x squared plus 5. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. 2x times a half gives me the x. It works out. Right? You can always check your answer. And it's usually not a bad idea to do so. OK, so now we come to this one, cosine of 5x. Uh, these ones where you almost have x, there's just some constant multiple out front, you'll pretty quickly get used to these. Right? Um, u is equal to 5x. du is 5 times dx. So 1 over 5 times du is dx. Okay. So this is just the integral of cos u times 1 over 5 times du. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. So sine u times a fifth plus c. Put the u back in terms of x. OK, and you got it. Um, this is the sort of one where once you've had a day or two of practice using integration by substitution, you'll probably do this in your head. If you can do it in one step, go ahead, do it in one step. It's pretty simple, right? Just remember, you know, because remember where this is coming from. It's if you took the derivative of this using the chain rule, we know we'd have to multiply by 5, right? We're reversing the chain rule, so the, the inverse of multiplication is division. So instead of multiplying by 5, we divide by 5, right? Take the antiderivative, divide by 5. You got your answer. OK, let's look at this last one. Similar idea. Maybe it's not so obvious what the composition is, though, right? Um, do we see? Not really. Not really an obvious composition. Um, but we do have some stuff in the denominator, right? 
So what, this is one of the things you'll get used to looking for is, is do I have a bunch of stuff down on the bottom? Uh, because remember that antiderivative of a reciprocal function is a natural log. Um, now, this is a linear function, right? It's a constant times x plus a constant. Um, and if you think about what we had here, if I had a, you know, like a plus 3 in there, that wouldn't have really had any effect on my process here other than I would have had to put a plus 3 in here at the end, right? Anytime you've got a linear function, multiple of x, possibly plus a constant, we just have to divide by that multiple of x, right? Whatever the multiplier is, divide by the multiplier, plug it in, right? It's pretty straightforward. But let's break it down in steps. Let's substitute the whole denominator, right? If you're not sure this is always a good choice, let u equal to minus 3x plus 1. du then is minus 3 times dx, okay? I don't see a minus 3 there, so we'll divide by it, okay? So if I do that, then this becomes, and the 7 we can bring out front if we want. We can bring that 1 over 3 out front, and the minus sign. Minus 7 over 3, 1 over u times du, right? So the minus 1 over 3 times du, that's my dx. 7 was there to begin with, the whole bottom, that's my u. So minus 7 over 3, 1 over u du, and we know the antiderivative for 1 over u. It's the natural log. Don't forget the absolute value. So what we get is minus 7 over 3 times the natural log, absolute value of u. Yeah, let's skip that step. Put it back in. Minus 3x plus 1. And don't forget your constant of integration. 